Oh, gee, Tommy, I can just picture his face. <laughs> yeah. Then he says, what you gonna live on, love? I said, oh, no, Mr. Hamilton. On the raise you're gonna give me. You know, Tommy, if you get that raise, I quit my job. Hey, you're gonna quit just as soon as we get married. I'm not gonna have every Tom, Dick, and Harry yelling, ain't you got my size underwear, Mrs. Brown? <laughs> Mrs. Brown. Mrs. Thomas Brown. Oh, gee, Tommy. <laughs> Eleven hours and 23 minutes. Then you won't be Annabelle Porter anymore. Tommy. What? Tommy, I just thought maybe when you took your handkerchief out on the subway, 136 dollars. We spent four at Coney. Are you happy? Oh, yes. Don't mind us. We'll wait. What do you want? Did you spend a poor man 136 bucks for a cup of coffee? Oh, we haven't any money. We were in the booth next to you in the chop suey joint. Tommy, call a policeman. Good. You can call for your ambulance. Oh, oh, give us a break. We're getting married on that money. Maybe the girl is marrying you for the dough. Now you can find out. Tommy, look. If you're smart, you keep your trap shut. Getting pretty late. I wouldn't hang around here too long. That's what I was telling these kids. Night. I'll be lighting a cigarette. In case he looks back. Get the dough. So if the boss ever finds out about this? He won't. Hey, wait a minute. I know you. I've seen you around the apartment house where I work. Listen, kid. Maybe you do know me. But you wouldn't want to be a widower before you got married. Why don't you fight like a man? How? Like this? Oh, Tommy. Tommy, oh. you hurt. No, he didn't hurt me. If he hadn't have had a gun, I'd have... Every cent we had in the world. Oh, no, he can't get married. Look, maybe if we went to the police. Oh, Tommy, no. Those men would do something horrible to us. I'm not going to let them get away with it. Oh, what can you do? Wait and see. I sure hope the boss never finds Shut out about this. We need it some dough, didn't we? Hi, Rocky. Hi, Bill. Hi, Hello, Frank. Gene here yet? No, we're waiting. Sent word something was up. It's about time. Hello, kid. Hello. How about a drink later on? I got to talk to you. I'm going out with the boss. You're falling for that guy. Oh, keep this up, the better it'll be for both of them. Still carrying the torch, huh? Yeah? Sure. Diamond studded, and he supplies the coal. You're wasting your time, Rocky. She's loyal to every dime the boss has got. Hey, the boys are not. Bats! Ah, uh, picking the lock again. Oh, it was just for fun. Someday I'll shoot right through that door. That'll be funny. Hey, here's something that ain't so funny. The DA don't live here anymore. He was a nice guy. But he couldn't take it. So they got a substitute pitcher. He wears clothes nice, don't you think? He looks like he just got his diploma. We'll take that away from him. You fellows must wonder what prompted me to assume this attitude of civic virtue. Now, this may sound strange, but I believe that crime can be wiped out by men who owe no political patronage and don't have to repay any bribes. Now, you're all outstanding men in your profession. Your attitude toward crime must be that of the normal citizen. You resent it. And therefore, you wouldn't hesitate to prosecute it. I know what I'm letting you in for. You may get shot in the back. Plenty of trouble. But what do you say we run all these rats into the East River? I have a big practice. If I leave it, I'll lose it. How about your wife and kids? Oh, I can't put them in danger. After all, I have too much at stake. But I'll take the job. How about you, Wilson? You go hunting every year. 
How about some real game? Well, a duck never shoots back, but you can count me in. You know, I'm tired of paying 18 cents for 15 cent artichokes. Just a minute. If I give up 50,000 a year in Palm Beach for 3,000 and obscurity, just what are we looking for? The men who direct crime out of bullet range, the top men. Gene, mm -hmm. how about chasing criminals instead of polo balls? <laughs> well, gentlemen, you have my unqualified moral support. I write checks. I coin slogans, I'll even make speeches. But when it comes to telling public enemies face to face what I think of them, I'm, uh, I'm scared. Gene, you're kidding. No, not this time, Warren. You see, funerals depress me, particularly my own. Well, I'm late for an engagement. Thanks for a lovely dinner, Warren. Gene, we need men like you. You'll be in the office with us one of these days. Well, it'll be a purely social visit, Warren. <laughs> Good night, gentlemen. All right. Good night. As the only one of us that has any sense. I'm getting worried. <laughs> What's this I hear about a new DA? I just left him. What? What? Say that again. I got an alibi. I just left Warren Rogers' apartment. Uh, he looks like a sap. Well, you're wrong, boys. He's plenty smart and he's plenty tough. But we're going to be just a little tougher. We make one wrong move. Is that all you wanted to tell us? Well, no, Frankie. As a matter of fact, I asked the boys to meet me here to see if you could dispose of $150,000 worth of jewels. I know a warehouse we can knock over with a million bucks in furs. Rocky, our next job will be Morton's Fifth Avenue jewelry store. But I got this first thing all lined up. Get rid of one watchman and the whole place is clear. I could use some furs. Rocky, we're not doing any job requiring butchering. I'm running this like a big business, with a minimum of risk. You're not thugs anymore, you're, uh, you're gentlemen. Gene, you'd look real nice in a scout suit. That'll be enough from you. We'll meet day after tomorrow and make all the arrangements. All right, you're the boss. But why do you have to mix with a cocktail and polo trot all night long? Ain't we good enough for you? Well, I'll tell you what we'll do, Rocky. I'll, uh, I'll loaf around here all night and you can mingle in society and find out where the big money is. The best people will welcome you with open handcuffs. Good night, Dorothy. Sorry I can't take you along. So am I. Business. Hello, boys. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Stick them up, all of you. All right, boys. Put them up. No rush now. And open your feet. Line up here. Now turn around. Frisk them. What's that? Uh, uh, go to their rear pockets and look for guns. like an arsenal. Side pocket. Oh, thank you. Uh, take his money, give me $136. You'll pardon me for butting in on a private affair, but uh, why the $136? You see, we were going to get married tomorrow, and then, then those two men held us up and, and took it all. That's how much it was. Come on, stop talking. Let me have the money. Oh! I got the boy. I got no! the girl. You uh -huh. would. Well, I know this boy. He works here. Call the police. Wait a minute, Frankie. You can turn me in, but let her go. She didn't have anything to do with it. I did so. If you turn him over to the police, I go too. Give me the money, kid. You know, you've both committed a very serious offense. Well, you can get 15 years in prison for this. Fifteen years? Yes. Your best years, too. Or you'll be old when you get out. I'd be 33, middle-aged. I like that. Well, of course it's my duty to turn you over. But we're not criminals. We're just trying to get our own money back. That man said he'd kill us if we told the police. Sit down over there, kid. You too. Oh, Chief, let's turn him over to the cop. I'll handle this. Right now, I want to hear more about that stick-up. 
But, Chief, you ain't gonna believe those kids, are you? We never stuck up nobody. Wait a minute. I'm not afraid of you, G. Sure, we stuck up the kid. We got this bunch buffaloed into letting you keep all the dough and give us coffee and kick money. Well, I needed more, and the kids were handy. I keep you all on an allowance so you won't splurge all of the town and give yourselves away. How many times have I told you to lay off small fry? Why take chances for a couple of bucks? Chances are in my line. They're all a lot of crooks. He's positively psychic. Well, never mind what we are, young fella. You just stuck up a private apartment. Yeah, they got laws against that. But maybe you can help me. You want to do me a little favor, or would you rather go to jail? It's up to you, kid. We'll do anything if you let us go. How about you? All right, it's a deal. We'll talk about the favor later. But remember, if you break your word, it's jail for both of you. Now can we go home? Surely. My home. Oh, I know you now. You're Daddy Longley. Maybe. Come along, kids. See you at the meeting, boys. Well, good night, and I'm very glad to meet you all. Yeah. I don't care what you say. He's been nice to us. Yeah, but there's something for me. And you hold a guy up, he's supposed to give you presents for it. You have no faith in people. Why, anyone could tell Gene was a gentleman just by looking at him. That is, anyone except you. Yeah, and if we'd have gone home the other night like I wanted to, we'd be married by now. But no, you had to walk in Central Park. I suppose I knew we were going to be robbed. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you should be. Just think if, if anyone had told us that we'd be living in a place like this and wearing clothes like these. We'd have thought they were goofy. But you know, I still can't see what this guy wants from us. I tell you, I don't like the setup. But people don't put themselves out for no reason at all. Hello, kids. Ready to go? Good evening, Mr. Fillmore. Well, don't we look pretty? What's on your mind? Well, well, Mr. Fillmore, it isn't that we don't appreciate everything you've done for us, but, well, Tommy's been wondering why you're doing it. Don't get me wrong, Mr. Fillmore, but we've just been wondering what we had to do to, well, to earn all this. Well, we'll arrange all about that later, Tommy. Right now, we're going to a nightclub. Come on, get your things. Did you hear that, Tommy? We're going to a nightclub. Yeah, well, I could enjoy it if I knew what he was up to. Look, Annabelle, let's get out of here while we can. Not until I see what the inside of a nightclub looks like. And I pray that you would call me your own. When I look in your eyes, I am thrilled to the skies, and I feel like a queen on a throne. The first time I saw you, I knew at a glance I was meant yours, yours alone. You have to the meeting. Not here. How long do I have to keep this up, seeing you behind this back, pretending I'm the chump? Be sensible. Why should I throw away a goldfish when I've got him hooked? Because I won't always be hiding and running. That's why. Ruffy. Hello, Mary. Sit down. Good evening, Mr. Fillmore. Hello, Frank. Table for three? No, just two. Make yourselves at home, kids. See you later. You're not playing me for a chunk. Be quiet. You want those kids squealing? Hello, Rocket. Hello, Spurt. Hey, you better be careful what you call her. I know what's going on. I'm sorry, kid. Let's forget everything. <laughs> You're hurting him. That's just to help you forget. How many times have I told you to let the kid alone? 
I was just trying to teach him a new grip. No, he's lying. He was trying to... It won't happen again. Why don't you two kids get out on the floor and have a dance? Go on. Come on, Rocky. I want to see you. Why did you bring those kids here for? I've got a job for them. Playing big shot. You're going soft. When I go soft, Rocky, I'll quit. And you can take my place. Come here, boys. Here's an enlargement from a candid camera shot of Morton's store. I want you to memorize every detail of it. This, uh, this is Edward Larkin, the salesman. Morton's an old man. You won't have any trouble with him, but uh, keep your eye on Larkin. The store opens at 9 in the morning, but they seldom have any customers before 9.10. If anybody should come in, you know, line them up against the back wall. We're wasting time. I can't get in and I can't get out. Sure you can, Rocky. We all know that. But my way, you see, nobody gets hurt. Personally, I prefer jail for robbery than the chair for murder. How about you boys? Skip it. Now, you all know what to do. In the exact time. Memorize your instructions and then destroy them. Cars in good shape? In every detail. How about yours, Larry? All set. Fine. Oh, Bill. At two minutes after nine, you and uh, Johnny start a fight in front of the store. I don't want a wrestling match, understand? Give me a fight. Set your watches. It's uh, three minutes after 12. The job will start promptly at 9, should be over by 9 7. Any questions? How about protection? Who's carrying the machine gun? There won't be any machine guns. If you pull a trigger on this job, Rocky, you won't rate a cent out of it. It's easy to say. Nobody will be shooting at you. I'm the one that's pulling this job. All you do is sit behind the desk. And give the orders. Maybe to those kids. But not to me. Rocky, you're really getting annoying. Speaking of those kids, go get them. All the kids. I said you go get them. You were right about him, Annabelle. Dean's a swell guy. Oh, I'm so glad you like him. Now we can really have some fun. Dean wants to see you two before you tear yourselves to pieces. you kids to do me a little favor, you remember? That's why I bought you the new clothes, so that you could go into an expensive jewelry shop tomorrow and not look out of place. We're not going to do anything crooked. Now, wait a minute, Tommy, wait a minute. All I want you to do is to ask to see some diamond rings. You won't like anything you see, and the salesman will put several trays out on the counter. Well, what for? The $2,000 I promised you. Oh, yes, but we're not... keep you both from going to jail for sticking us up at Frankie's place. You're scared. Wait, I'll faint. Look, maybe couldn't we run away? You no, know, they'd find us. Maybe, maybe if we just act natural, nobody will know we're part of the gang.
Good morning. May I help you? We'd like to get some wedding rings. Wedding rings? No engagement rings. Of course. Right over here. Well, the kids should be in there by now. And then? What do you mean? I loaned you ten bucks last payday. Listen, wise guy, I paid you once for that. You can't get away with this. Oh, you're a dirty liar. You're too small to talk to me like that. Oh, yeah? Oh. planned in advance for a minimum of danger. You know, Dorothy, my father was a swell businessman. He'd been very proud of me. Sure he would. You handled the swell. Well, set up as foolproof. I've got all I need now. So what happened? What do you think? We're going to be married and give it all up. Get out of here. I seen that swell. I was afraid you were through on account of how you took those kids in your apartment and Gave me the cold shoulder. Oh. Mm. I just didn't want to involve them in a gang, that's all. I needed them for a job, and they did it. The port should be coming in. As soon as everything is finished, Dorothy, I want you to go out and buy yourself a bushel full of clothes. Why? Attention, Thank news flash. You. Armed bandits broke into Morton's famous jewelry store on Fifth Avenue and escaped with over $100,000 worth of jewelry. Wrong. $150,000. When Morton lowered his hand slightly, one of the bandits shot him down in cold blood. Edward Larkin, the salesman, ran out to summon aid and was also shot at by the escaping thugs. His condition is reported critical. Rocky, wait here for me, Dorothy. We may have to move fast. Bill, let me talk to Rocky. Yeah, just a minute. Rocky, this is Dorothy for you. Wonder what's on her mind. Hello, Dorothy. What? So you heard Art went, huh? Well, don't worry about me. I've had plans for a long time. I'll be waiting for him. None of my business, but if Jean ever finds out about you and Dorothy... Find out what? You're right. None of your business. I'm going out. Jean said for us not to leave this room. Yeah.
we did what you told us. Now we want to get away. We never wanted to get mixed up in this robbery and killing. All right, come on inside. I'll attend to you later. Hello, Jean. Get out of the way, kid. You're into business now, like the rest of us. So you can watch me elect a new boss. Still ambitious, Rocky? Yeah. I like to tell people what to do. I hate to be told. I try to tell you you need a gun in this business. People respect you more. All right, go ahead and shoot. Get it over with. I like to see you squirm first. I've got something to say that might make you wriggle a little. Stealing cheese out of my icebox, Rocky? Funny guy, ain't you? Well, have a good laugh. While you were mixing with the best people, I was taking out Dorothy. I suspect she loves me. You're a liar. Can check up on us when you come back to haunt me. <laughs> Thanks, kid. All right, stay where you are, Rocky. All right, boss. Now is your chance to shoot. But you won't. I'm afraid of you. You never scared me. That's why I took your girl away. That's why the gang wants me to tell them what to do. Tommy, take Annabelle in the back room. Stick around, kids. I'm going to take that gun away from him in a minute. Go on, do what I tell you. Rocky, you've been getting out of line lately. You're becoming a liability to the gang. I got a letter from Mrs. Winters this morning. So what? She called us a bunch of yellow rats. When her husband went to prison, we promised to keep her going and send her money. She never got a cent. What did you do with that money, Rocky? The boys would like to know about that. Yeah. But you ain't going to tell them. You ain't going to tell them nothing. Why don't you shoot, you big shot? There we are, Rocky. You don't know how to fire a gun, do you, Gene? Well... I'll show you. boys will get you for this. Then, uh, everything he said about you two was true, huh? Figure it out for yourself. Jean killed Rocky. Jean! Where's the money from Frankie? Patsy didn't bring it back yet. Bill, you and Johnny cover up Rocky and put him in a truck in the garage. You know what to do. You can't get away with killing Rocky. Try to kill me. That isn't true. It is. We saw him. You're not going to believe those kids. That's up to the boys to decide. Why waste time? Everybody be here tonight. You'll get a chance to talk. I hope you die slow. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I appreciate tributes from my loyal friends. Hey, listen. Rocky said we were part of the gang. Well, we don't want to be. We'd rather go to jail. How could you do that? You're not like the rest of them. I can do without the heroics, kids. I wanted you to do me a little favor, and you did it. I owe you $2,000. We don't want any part of it. Well, maybe you're right. How much did Rocky take from you? $136. $136. There you are. Now beat it while you still can. You don't belong around this place. Come on, let's get out of here. But... But couldn't you run away before they try you? <laughs> sure, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll hide in my attic. That'll fool them. Go on, get out, will you? Stop worrying about me. Goodbye. 
Goodbye, kids. Hey, I just seen him wrapping up the remains. Yeah, there's liable to be some more wrapping up before the night's over. Yeah, they ought to give you a medal. <laughs> what do you use, a mousetrap? The boys don't think it's so funny. Well, you got my vote. Thanks. Hey, here's something that'll hand you a laugh. Look, it's Lefty Mooney. Who's he? The cops are after him for sticking up Morton. He's been dead for three years. His mob washed him up for killing a member. <laughs> If you don't show up, it's up to one of us to take care of him. He's had plenty of time to catch a train since then. Gene wouldn't run out. I don't know what you fellas think about it, but I think that when Gene got rocky, he got the best member the gang ever had. Wait a minute, Bill. Don't try Gene before he gets here. What's the matter, Larry? Did he hire you for his lawyer? No. But Gene rates a fair trial. Hello, boys. Sorry I'm late. I apologize. Well, why the silence? Gene, we're going to give you a fair trial. The boys decide against you. I guess you know what that means. Yes. Rocky was the most popular and the most valuable member of the gang. You had no right to shoot Rocky just because you had a grudge against him. Now, wait a minute, fellas. Give me a chance to talk. What for? You killed him, didn't you? Oh, shut up, will you, and give him a chance to talk. That's it. Go on outside and wait. Where's he going? He's going to pick up the money from the Morton job. I thought maybe you fellas wouldn't want any intruders. What's all this talk about? Why don't we get through with it? Now, wait a minute, Dorothy. Look at yourselves, boys. What were you before I took over? Just a bunch of petty thieves. You fellas realize that this past year our receipts have been more than a million dollars? All I got was 15 grand. Well, you're not the whole organization. You're simply a wheel in the machine. Yeah, well, I'm a pretty big wheel. Besides that, I pay out a lot of money for your protection. Yeah, but we're the ones that risk our necks for it. What's the risk, the way I run things? What do you care? You've got a nice apartment. I need that for my connections. Have you any idea what that cost me? May I inquire, Mr. Fillmore, what all this has got to do with your shooting of Rocky? It has this to do with it. But under my leadership, you've all kept out of trouble. If I was right in one thing, I've been right in another. Rocky disobeyed my orders. He ended up by pulling a gun on me. Fortunately, I beat him to it. I was there. He shot Rocky down cold. He didn't give him a chance. You were jealous of him. Dorothy, you're lying. Just because you're the boss, Gene, doesn't mean you didn't have to live up to the rules. He didn't think of that when he shot Rocky. Well, what are you going to do? Why don't you give him the same treatment he gave Rocky? Well, that's enough for me, boys. Let's get going. Well, we'll just kick him out of the gang and let it go at that. He didn't give Rocky a chance. <laughs> well, frankly, I'm against it. But I guess I'm outvoted. Well, gentlemen, after looking over this gang, all I can say is that New York is reasonably safe tonight. I'm not going to crawl. It's clear to me that I'm the difference here between a well-regulated business organization and a gang of thugs. We got along all right before you came in. And we'll get along after you're gone. Won't we, boys? Come on, let's get it. Hiya, guys. I brought the treasury. Well, what's the matter? Did I miss something? Well, you missed all the speeches, Patsy, but you're in time for the fireworks. Is that so? I brought along a few friends to see the fun. I didn't have any subpoenas, but I rounded up some witnesses. What is I thought I told you kids to stay away from here. Yeah, but Batsy here said it'd help if we told about Rocky trying to shoot you. You coached him well, Batsy. Is that Jean's poor old mother? Oh, I forgot to introduce you. Fellas, this is Mrs. Winter. Billy's wife? Yeah, Mrs. Billy Winter. I guess I look a lot different than I did when Bill and me was running around together. TB. When you ain't eating regular, it 
Billy was in the wrong business, but he didn't realize that when he'd be sent to prison, I'd be left behind. Like this. Yeah, but, but how can that be? We've been sending you dough regular. By way of rock. He was a nice boy. He kept the money himself. Don't you believe her? It's a frame-up. Did you know about this? He showed me a letter from her. But he didn't think you guys would care about a thing like that. Trip's off. That's what you think. No, you don't. Give me that gun, I think. You know I hate guns. Beat it. Sweet kid, that one. Hello. I want to speak to Mr. Warren Rogers. No, no, I got to talk to Mr. Rogers personally. Hello, Mr. Rogers. Never mind who this is. Raid the club Sultan now. You'll pick up the entire gang that knocked over Morton's this morning. Won't you come down to my office? No, but... You can come to my apartment, if you'll bring me plenty of protection. Yes, I have your number. We'll be right there. Yes, sir? Raid the club, Sultan. Bring in everybody that you can pick up there. Maybe another one of those crack pots, but we can't miss any bets. It's the first time I've cooked since I was 11, Wayne. Just let me help you. Women weren't allowed in our kitchen at Leavenworth. What is it, a college or a penitentiary? <laughs> you kids don't have to worry about Leavenworth. You're getting out of the racket right now. All right, boys, bring it in. It's a raid. Watch yourself, kid. Hurry up. All right, search the side room. Hey, come on, come on, on your feet. We didn't do anything. Uh, honest, we were just sitting here eating, and, and you burst in. Oh, yeah, we don't know sure. anything. The place has been closed for an hour, and you're just sitting here eating. Nobody else here. Looks like a wild goose chase. The rest of them get out the back way. Well, we'll take these kids in anyway. You can't hold up. It's good, isn't it? Takes 20 cops to bring in a couple of kids. Yeah, we'll see what Rogers can make of this. Come on, come on. All right, come on, get them out of here. Right, come on. on you. I can't let the kids take the rap for this. We can thank Dorothy. Don't you worry about her. I'll take care of her. Watch yourself, Dad. You see you later. went off all right. The place was completely surrounded. And your boys will have a little surprise for you when you get back to the station. An old friend of yours named Gene Fillmore will be there. Fillmore? Gene Fillmore? What's he got to do with it? He's what the newspapers mean when they talk about a crime wave. How much protection are you going to give me? All that's necessary. Hello? Yes. It's for you. Hello. Roger speaking. Nobody else? Are you sure? All right, I'll be down in a few minutes. All they picked up in that raid was a couple of kids. Now, what's all this about Gene Fillmore? I tell you, it's true. He's the man you want. He hired those two kids for the Morton robbery. Let's check on that one. We'll see you later.
that I'm a detective, I shouldn't say it, but I'm bewildered. I can't believe that Jean had anything to do with this. The more I think of it, the more preposterous it seems. What could I possibly accuse him of? Maybe this is Exhibit A. Jean's signature, all right. No, I'm not so bewildered. Suppose we go over to Jean's. No. I want to talk to those two kids first. You boys wait for the car. Let's go. Here they are. They've had their breakfast and everything they want. Sit down, Annabelle. You too, Tommy. Well, there's no use beating about the bush. You two kids are in a bad spot. Oh, why can't you let us go home? What do you want from us? We know about your part in the Morton robbery. What we want is evidence against Gene Fillmore. You don't know what you're talking about. You've got no right to keep us here. Did you ever hear of a girl by the name of Dorothy Palmer? No, sir. Well, she told me all about you. She lied. She was making up things because we don't know her. Did you know that everyone connected with the Morton robbery is guilty of murder? We don't know a thing. Now, you tell me about Jean Fillmore. And in return, I'll ask the prosecuting attorney not to demand the limit for you. Mr. Rogers, you must have made some mistake. We've never been in Morton's jewelry store. No, you see, we were going to go get married, and, and to celebrate, we went to a nightclub. And the man let us stay late. Then the police came in, and that's all we know. You were at the nightclub with the rest of the gang and Gene Fillmore. We never heard of any Gene Fillmore. If he's the man you're after, why don't you arrest him and leave us alone? Because if we arrest him now, we'll never be able to make it stick. That's why I want you to. I want to build up a case against Gene Fillmore so that no jury on earth will fail to send him to the electric chair. Well, it must be a case of mistaken identity. Yes, that's possible. You'll find out about that right now. Come along. I'm going to take them over to the hospital. I'm going down, Mr. Rogers. How is he, Miss? A little better today, but he mustn't get too excited. Hello, Mr. Rogers. Have you... Have you caught them yet? Mr. Larkin, can you identify these two people? They're the ones. They got me to put the trays on the counter. Then they changed their minds and left shortly before the others entered. Oh, look at it, mister. Look at it. We're not the ones. I swear. Gene Fillmore hired you, didn't he? No. Who did? What's the use of denying it? Larkin identified you. I told you a million times we went in to buy a ring and the prices were too high for it. Well, that's the best store in town. If you couldn't afford it, why'd you go there? Annabelle wanted to look. Why did you ask for a diamond ring? Wouldn't you buy a plain ring? We weren't buying, we were asking. Tommy, I've given you every chance, but you're making it tougher and tougher for yourself. You've got a fine sense of loyalty, but it's misguided. You've got to look to the law to help you now. Kid, we call this the singing room, because sooner or later everybody sings in here. I tell you, I don't know a thing. Please let me go. I want to see Annabelle. What are you doing to her? Tell us who hired you. You'll stay here forever. I've got to see Annabelle. Bring her in. Bring her in. Oh, Tommy. I'll let you two talk it over. You'll be all alone and there'll be no dictographs. They're listening to every word we say. No matter what they do, we can't talk. 
If we talk, they've got us. But Mr. Larkin, the dead will find us. But they can't put any connection with the gang unless we talk. <laughs> now, how about it? We can't tell what we don't know, can we? You don't leave me any choice. The rest is up to you. What are you going to do? <laughs> Make sure that Tommy tells us what we want to know. Oh, Tommy! It's all right, honey. All right, sit down. All right, boys. I've told all I know. Please. Please don't. Wait outside, Bart. Right. We'll wait here till Tommy talks. Are you ready to tell the truth? I have told you the truth. I've got plenty of time. But they may be hurting Tommy. Possibly. He hasn't broken yet. But he will. All right, don't let up. Keep pounding those questions. Get a stenographer. <laughs> the gang hired you to go into Morton's jewelry store, didn't they? Yes, sir. How much were you paid? We wouldn't take any money. Then why did you do it? He forced us to. Who did? <laughs> they said you confessed. I couldn't stand it anymore. But we agreed not to talk. Tell me I couldn't help it. I'm asking you to testify that Gene Fillmore hired you. We don't know any Gene Fillmore. It was... It was Rocky who hired us. Rocky did. You realize you're shielding a criminal? You want me to start all over again? Never mind. Do what you want. We won't say any more. Take him back to their cell. They've got courage. Too bad it's wasted. Good afternoon, Mr. Rogers. Good afternoon, Phillips. Mr. Fillmore giving a party? A farewell party. Did you know that Mr. Fillmore was going to Europe? I had an idea he might. Hello, Warren. Glad you dropped in. I'm trying to get you. Phillips tells me you're going to Europe. Isn't this rather sudden? <laughs> yes, I'm taking a little holiday from a vacation. Do you mind if I talk to you a minute, Gene? Not at all. What's it all about? Want me to bring you back something from England? No. I want to talk to you about Dorothy Palmer. What's that all about? You know her pretty well, don't you? Well, I've heard of her. She's a nightclub singer, I believe. Got a good voice. You know her better than that. You gave her a check for a thousand dollars. Why all the mystery, Warren? Of course I gave her a check. She was killed last night. And you're involved. Really? What do you want me to do? I think you better come down to my office. It won't take long, Warren. Remember, I don't want to miss my boat. I hope you don't. I have to go out for a few moments, folks. Keep right on with the party. I'll be right back. There you are. Thanks. You want to have a drink before we go? No, thanks. Well, Phillips, if I'm not back by six, send my things to the doctor. Good. Lucky. Sit 
ridiculous, Warren. Sounds as if she was trying to blackmail me. Goes deeper than that, Jean. She said that you were the head of the Morton gang. What? <laughs> oh, I get it now. You and my foolish friends have planned all this to make me miss my boat. <laughs> it's a gag. This is no gag, Jean. Well, it's all right. I have a permit for that. I was taking it to the boat. Maybe so. Mr. Rogers has brought in Jean Fillmore. Mr. Rogers, Tommy and Annabelle have just signed a confession admitting that Jean Fillmore is the head of the gang. We did not. We never said a word about you. If you didn't know Jean, how'd you pick him out so quickly? Well, frankly, I don't know what this is all about. Who are these children? Yours? Take them into the next room. No use stalling, Jean. We've got you. Got me? On what ground? I'm afraid you're headed for the chair. Now, that's rude of you, Warren. How would you like it if I invited you to my home and talked to you like that? I wouldn't like it, but this is not my home. It's my place of business. Oh. You have a very nice place of business. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be a guest. You never thought you'd be honored with an invitation, did you? Never. I'm getting on in the world. Oh, thank you. Business is business, Jean. Unfortunately, friendship cuts no ice. Oh, then I take it we're no longer friends, eh? Now listen, Warren. If you had anything on me, you wouldn't be talking to me right now. You were back at the Morton job. Really? Well, what makes you think so? This may sound like flattery. But it was such an ingenious job that it would take a mind like yours to conceive it. Well, I'm surprised that you are. The courts call that imagination, not evidence. Gene, I wasn't even sure myself until those kids picked you up. Dorothy Palmer told us about them and Rocky and the Morton job. It all fits in with your European trip and the gun. Well, now, if this is a frame-up, my lawyers are too clever for that. It's pretty convincing evidence. It's the testimony of a dead woman against mine. You know, Warren, frankly, I'm conceited enough to think I'll be believed. We've also got this. A sworn confession from those kids saying that they were part of the Morton gang. You mean those kids confessed to murder? You read it. <laughs> well, this doesn't involve me at all. That's a very cheap trick, Warren. No, I'm just being honest with you. I'll admit we could have pushed that kid a lot further, but he never would have willingly implicated you. But it's just a question of time. What are you after? You. You'll never get me. Jean. Let's forget for a minute which side of the fence we're on. The real tragedy of this is not Dorothy Palmer or the Morton store. It's those two youngsters in there. What's the matter with them? You know. No, no, I don't. Those two kids are just as guilty of murder as the gunman who did the actual shooting. What jury would convict those kids? Maybe the girl will get off with a stretch. But the boy will go to the chair with you. Remember the night I said I'd stop the crime wave? Yes, yes, I recall it vaguely. And for the sake of a political plum, you don't care who you walk into the death house as long as you walk into City Hall. You know me better than that. I've been fair with you. Can't you see that we've got you? Well, not from the cards you've shown me so far, Warren. <laughs> They're all uses. Warren, may I see you alone? Come right in. Wait in the next room, will you, Jean? Yes, will you hurry it up? My boat sails at 12. You got us into this, now get us out of it. This man's a stranger. He can't help us. Why, this man is... Shh. Jean, we never told on you. We won't keep quiet. You sent us to the store and said we wouldn't get into trouble. And now, now we're allowed to go to the chair. I'm sorry, kids. We're sorry. Words don't help any. Get us out of this. Do you want us to die? No. Well, then, 
Then tell them you sent us. Tell them you made us go. Jean, if you'd only tell them that you sent us to the jewelry store, we could go free. Stop it, will you? Why should I worry about your problems? I've got plenty of my own. You've got to help us out. We don't want to die. Neither do I. Maybe if I get out, I can hire lawyers to help fight for you. But we signed a confession. What good will it do you if I die too? And I thought you were such a nice person. Look, we want to live and, and get married and, and work and, and be happy. Don't you think I know that? Don't you think I'm going crazy thinking about you kids? They'll never convict Annabelle. The most you'll get will be a couple of years in prison. Oh, I don't want to live without Tommy. Gene, Gene, if you'd only tell them what really happened. And send myself to the chair? Gene, in case you've changed your mind, here's a confession, all ready to sign. Why should I, Warren? You think I'm crazy? I've got these kids. They haven't a chance. How am I signing that help then? I might go easy. That isn't enough. What do you want? I want the unconditional release of Tommy and Annabelle. Give me the district attorney. Hello, this is Warren Rogers. Gene Fillmore is willing to confess in exchange for the freedom of the kids. Yes, I know their whole history and I recommend it. Here are the two confessions. Sign yours and you can tear up there. Did, uh, did I didn't do all this? You seem to have been at the head of your trade. Those always have such good pens. Gene, it's too bad a man with your brains went wrong. You'd have been a big shot in a legitimate business. I counted on a different sort of retirement from authors. Are we free? That's right. I'm sorry, Jean. Sorry about you. Oh, that's all right, Tommy. It's my own fault. I got soft-hearted. Is there anything we can do? No, thank you, Annabelle. Mr. Rogers will make me very comfortable. There's a little present from me to you. Now get out of here, both of you, and don't ever come back. Oh, goodbye, Jean. So long. So long, kids. Just a minute, will you? I, uh, I want to watch the kids go out. 